playing ice hockey with your family on a frozen lake. Very Canadian. But then, all of a sudden, your grandma slips and falls on her hip. It will need to be replaced. How long till grandma gets her new hip? Well, if you're in BC, it could take up to 26 weeks. Unfortunately, long healthcare wait times are becoming as Canadian as maple syrup, hockey, and plaid. And it doesn't stop with hip replacements. We are in the midst of an economic healthcare crisis in BC. Wait times for elective healthcare have come to an all time peak. What is elective healthcare? It could be a medical procedure or treatment that is not an immediate essential for survival of the patient to live, but is determined to be necessary eventually. And it's usually scheduled before time. Some examples of these can include back surgery, cosmetic procedures, joint replacements, fracture correction, kidney stone removal, cataract surgery, and cleft palate surgery. But where does all this waiting happen? Well, from when you first notice you have a problem to the surgery or treatment you're going to get, there's a lot in between. You have to go through an appointment with your general practitioner, then wait for an appointment with a specialist, then wait for the surgery. The statistics recorded only account for the wait to see a surgeon and wait for surgery, so the actual entire process from point to injury to recovery is even longer. Why is waiting such an issue for the patient? First of all, it significantly reduces their quality of life. In order to qualify for an elective surgery, the injury or irregularity usually impacts your daily life. The longer you wait, the longer you are limited in what you're able to do. It also can further the condition of your injury. Certain injuries awaiting surgery worsen over time. Surgeries are decided based on urgency, but some fly over the heads of the system. For example, a case study by the National Library of Medicine shows patients who received their cataract surgery within six weeks had far better results than those who waited six months. Patients who waited six months plus for cataract surgery reported significant vision loss, pain, and increased accidents related to lack of vision. Why are the wait times so long? Well, there's a scarce number of medical machines. As of 2019, Canada had 10.5 MRI machines per million population. As comparison to other Western countries, Japan has 55.21 machines per million and the United States has 40.44. And while the machines are few, most of them are over a decade old. The Fraser Institute suspects the new MRI machine bought by the Horgan government in 2021 won't fix the problem. There's also a lack of proper patient assessment. All injuries ranging from a sprained wrist to cardiac arrest go through the emergency room in a BC hospital. There's lack of management, and on top of that, lack of staffing. There's not enough staffing to fill shifts, or to account for the decrease in general practitioners due to the aging population. The Fraser Institute has recorded the average medical wait time in Canada and the average medical wait time in BC for the last 30 or so years. And their results show that there has been an upwards trend of overall wait times, skyrocketing in BC to 26 weeks in 2020, and at an all-time federal high in 2020 with 22.6 weeks. What has the government done so far? Canada has a long history of struggling with healthcare wait times. This is not a new issue. In the 1990s, Paul Martin, the fin finance minister, introduced the Canadian Health and Social Transfer in the 1995 budget, which accelerated the, prov the provincial wave of cost-cutting that led to hospital closures and significant reductions in health human services, as well as the co corresponding erosion in timeliness of care and public confidence. Skip to 2004, the, the government introduced the 2004 Health Accord. It was a legal agreement be between the federal and provincial governments on healthcare funding. The 10-year plan set in 2004 recommitted leaders to the Canada Health Act, which set wait times and other goals and increased healthcare funding by 6% each year, focusing on cancer, heart disease, diagnostic imaging, joint, joint replacements, and site restoration. In 2006, the British Columbia Medical Association published Waiting Too Long, Reducing and Better Managing Wait Times in British Columbia, a policy paper by the BCMA's Council on Health, Economics, and Policy, begging the government to do better when it comes to wait times in BC. 2007, Fraser Health published their most recent policy update, which is still in use today. In 2011, the federal government announced it was changing the way it would transfer funds to the provinces. 
It was estimated that Ontario would lose an excess of over $13 billion over 10 years. The cost of provinces and territories compared to the current arrangement would almost be $25 billion. It would be almost $36 billion compared to the promises of the 2007 federal budget plan. Skipping all the way to current day, in 2021, the BC Health Minister Adrian Dix tried to buy a new MRI machine for BCH. Later in 2021, a, a vaccination requirement was set for healthcare workers. It reduced the risk of contracting COVID-19 in a healthcare setting. Part of what the government did worked for a while, but especially after COVID-19 in early 2020, they dropped the ball and stopped following through on promises they've made decades ago. What happens if this continues? And how does, how does this connect to economics? Well, long he healthcare wait times put the federal and provincial economy and welfare at risk. Canada and BC prides itself on having free basic medical care, which is accessible to Canadian citizens. It can only be exceptional if received in a reasonable time. Failure to do this may result in a push for a two-tier healthcare system. A two-tier healthcare system is where the government provides a level of basic healthcare, which in often cases is very poor, and a secondary tier that exists for those who wish to pay an additional charge for care that's better quality and significantly quicker. In Canada, we currently have a single-tiered healthcare system. No one has to pay for extra basic healthcare and everyone has to wait. A similar standard of care is offered to everyone. The problem with a two-tier system is that it actually makes wait times worse for some. Let me explain. While privatized healthcare benefits private doctors who get paid more, as well as the patients who can afford it, everyone who pays for care budges ahead in line. So everyone who cannot afford to pay for private care will wait even longer than the one-tiered system. And those who can afford to pay for care are most likely marginalized or at-risk groups, like single-parent families, those bordering the poverty line, those below the poverty line, including the homeless, people who survive on disability pay, women who give birth or take maternal leave, racialized groups, the list goes on and on. And who benefits from private care? The upper class. Free public health care is the most universally agreed on social benefit in BC and Canada. But if it continues to fail, the residents of BC will push for private care. This will work in reverse to what we want to achieve, eventually widening the wealth gap even more than it already is. The bottom line is the rich do not deserve to live and have better health care over the poor. Urgent care should not be something you should pay for. So what can we do about it? Is there even a solution? Well, it's complicated. One of the downsides of public health care is that wait times do happen. But how can we reduce them so that they're manageable and livable for the patients receiving these surgeries? Well, one of my solutions is we need more healthcare workers, mainly doctors. And we're going to do this through education. We can subsidize the cost of medical school and make it more affordable. Increase medical program space and increase the programs in rural areas. Increase the quality and quantity of biology and anatomy courses in public schools. Advertise careers in the medical field. Increase benefits for healthcare workers. And source more international medical students. Incentivize them with benefits. Second solution is a better division of labor. Integrate lower urgency care procedures in smaller clinics and facilities to relieve hospital space. Next, we have to work on our policy updates. Update the policies on hospital staffing. Account for the increased patient load and policies created over a decade ago. We need more staff and more shifts. We, lastly, we need to invest in more machines. BC machines are old. Invest in updates to increase the efficiency, in efficiency of our medical equipment. How much is this going to cost? Well, the BC government plans to spend $4 billion on healthcare initiatives in the next three years. We know now that we don't just need money to fix the healthcare wait time problem. But will this even be enough money? Well, we'll see. I suspect not. As Canadians, we all want to be healthy and happy. So let's make a push to expect more out of the federal and provincial governments to reduce wait times.